cross is a mistake and this noble aspect because he didn't want simply to say, okay, he, he took part in the uh, real political life. Uh, he engaged mistakenly, of course, in a historical and political effort for the transformation of Germany, Europe, and possibly the world. The idea of Verwindung comes later in his work, comes in, a, uh, in an essay which he says he wrote between 36 and 40 or something like that, but which he published, he was published much later in Verwindung, I say in the early 50s. Uh, the term of Verwindung, the idea of Verwindung comes later in his work, clearly also as a way of taking distance from the political era of 1933, which, by the way, was also a self-misunderstanding of his idea of ontological difference, to cite one of the main points of faith of my cult, <laughs> ontological difference. He misunderstood that. Why? Because uh, having stopped to read St. Paul and uh, having started to read Herbert, Oh, but this is very, very rough. But when you ask me, when did Heidegger become a Nazi? When he stopped to comment upon the Christian tradition, and he started to comment upon Herderman. Poor Herderman, he is not so, so, so guilty. But it was the idea of Germany as the new Greece, as, as being an underdeveloped industrial and an underdeveloped country. The poets of the late 18th century in Germany believed in Germany as a, the possible place of a rebirth of the ancient pre-classical Greek, Greece. So not classical Greece like Winckelmann, but pre-classical Greece like Nietzsche, who exactly opposed the pre-classical Greece to the Socratic. Uh, rationalism and so on and so forth. So Heidegger misunderstood the ontological difference because, because in his mind being couldn't come back if ever he was present as he believed it was in the pre-classical Greece. So if he believed that it was possible to reconstruct a pre-metaphysical civilization, non-objectifying, not uh, uh, all, uh, forgetting uh, uh, of being and so on, which was clearly from his same point of view, uh, from his very point of view, uh, was a, a mistake to think that the inter Germany, no, no matter, could have been churches in uh, England. <laughs> not, uh, it was not a matter of being with or against it, it was a matter of believing that in a national state of the 20th century could be reconstructed a pre metaphysical, pre classical, pre uh, not, not forgetful, not, uh, not forgetful of being civilization, which is which was impossible. Mm, but it is nevertheless true that Heidegger was not, was not interested in a pure theoretical and philosophical change, so that if we read politically his notion of Fermindum, we are not betraying his basic intentions. Consequently, no revolution, no overcoming, neither political nor spiritual, but fair window. Not only for philosophers, but for all of us, for the world. Uh, remark, uh, I am just to, to the last page, and I will show you. Uh, remarks that when I, I try to, to expand on this way, uh, I always imply that philosophy conceives of itself as a way of emancipation, of liberation, of transformation. Uh, in this sense, it's obvious for me, but uh, let me just emphasize it, it's obvious for me that philosophy is not a science. We are not describing anything. So if there is a difference, uh, it, came, it came to my mind 
during the previous two interventions of tonight, between what René Girard makes, does, and what I think I do and try to do, uh, is that he nevertheless claims to be a, an anthropologist. I am a philosopher. So I don't describe anything. I don't offer a true description of something. I try to elaborate and uh, develop the original intention, emancipatory intention of philosophy. And Heidegger taught me that. He, for, for, yes, for a while, in being in time, he can be understood as a phenomenologist, describing the stru structures of human existence. But as a, the main structure of human existence he described was projectuality, and give off a night and draw a night, be uh, thrown down as a, as a project. So it's difficult to say that his philosophy is a, a way of showing the real status of affairs and then recommend some attitude. Uh, this would be a very, a very false way of approaching it. But at any rate, uh, when I say, when I say uh, that uh, the, the matter is uh, what we are called to do, believe, think in this perspective, uh, I'm not claiming any scientific validity. Uh, and this is the status of philosophy in general. I mean, no, no philosophy, no purely descriptive philosophy uh, can show us a way of emancipation, except if we believe that this is to, to be demonstrated, to be shown, to be proved, that to know the way the things are is the real emancipation. Would you really believe that Jesus would say that truth will free you by, intent, by meaning truth in terms of and describe to you the, the state of affairs, being freed by the knowledge of all the handbooks of physics, chemics, chemistry, and so on. What, what kind of, when we go to, as a matter, in theology, what is the eternal life? Ah, contemplation of God, but surely not the, the, the rehearsing of all the theorems of geometry and so on and so forth. This is the truth. The truth will free you, but absolutely not in the sense of a descriptive truth. Uh, so let's, let's leave aside that, but it was because I, I remarked at this point, at this point of my paper, which is at, at the end, uh, um, that it was a little bit bombastic, so we should. Of course, when I speak of philosophy, I, I indicate a project. Absolutely not. I don't offer a description. Let me go back to the text and go to the end. It is nevertheless the truth that Heidegger wanted to, to give Verwindung a political meaning and so on. The claim of universality of philosophy is not at all forgotten. This would be a betrayal of his task. There would be no meaning in proposing Verwindung as a way of out of metaphysics if we have to conceive philosophy as a specialized, specialized form of knowledge, a science among the ones, uh, other ones, an academic discipline, and so on. Even this way of considering philosophy, which uh, I see represented by a, a famous American philosopher like, like uh, say, John Searle, for instance, involves a commitment for the general order of the world, namely the commitment for the actual order and an acceptance of its division of work. I had once, many years ago, a discussion recorded by the BBC with John Searle. And when myself and another European continental philosopher objected that we should analyze the framework within which we say there is the cat is on the man. He said, well, the cat is on the man. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. 
let's go to work. That means let's accept, first of all, the social division of the world and do what a philosopher is supposed to do. I don't know what, by the way, because in order to describe the cat on the mat, we don't need philosophers. <laughs> 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 